Diablo 4 superfans, be warned. On February 21st, Last Epoch will officially launch, and you are going to hate it. This video is for us Diablo 4 enthusiasts who believe Diablo 4 is the perfect ARPG in every way, with absolutely no issues. If you are not one of these people and actually like Last Epoch, I suggest you stop watching this video right now, as it may trigger you. Okay, now that those people are gone and it's just us Diablo purists, we can finally get into why we're going to hate Last Epoch. My first of many reasons you're going to hate Last Epoch is its price. It's only $35 for the full game. What a stupid number, am I right? I know I'm not going to enjoy myself unless the game is at least $70, and there is no $100 early access version? Like, come on guys, are you even trying here? And get this, they're going to keep updating the game and won't charge for DLC and expansions. This is awful, and such a bad idea. Diablo 4 is going to have an expansion every year. And I know, after this year's experience playing this absolute gem of a game, I can't wait to dish out another $70 for the expansion. The next thing I absolutely despise about Last Epoch is its skill trees. Yes, I said skill trees, meaning more than one. They have a passive skill tree, then a whole complete skill tree for every single skill in the game. Again, what an absolutely stupid idea and a waste of time. Let me show you an example side by side using Fireball. On the left, we have the Giga Chad Diablo 4's Fireball and its skill tree section. So freaking clean. And let's look at our options here. We can either do more damage with Fireball, or over here, we can do more crit damage with Fireball. Thank you, Blizzard, for giving us what we want. Meaningful, game-changing choices in a skill tree. Now let's look over here at this abomination of a skill tree for Last Epoch's Fireball. The options we have to augment Fireball here are turning it into an ability where we can shoot multiple Fireballs in a cone, or turn it into a Plasma Ball that does more damage, or adds an explosion, or homing feature, or turning it into a flamethrower. And we can even combine these together and have a plasma flamethrower that explodes? I gotta stop, I'm getting too overwhelmed from all these options. I think you can all see what a major waste of time all these options are. They could have used that time to create something we actually want in an ARPG. Like having a system that locks skill points behind finding over 150 random statues. Or having a world boss, but make sure it's on a 3 hour timer so we can all make sure we're there to kill it. Or dungeons, where you need to pick up an idol, but you need 3 of them to open the door, but can't hold more than one, so you gotta backtrack. Ah yes, the good old days. Speaking of being overwhelmed, let's talk stash tabs. Again, Diablo 4 has the perfect amount of them. Five. I, may, maybe six. Okay, I really don't know whoever uses that many tabs. Right, guys? This is where I almost threw up in my mouth when I heard in Last Epoch you can have over 100 stash tabs. What even is that? Do you think we're stupid and don't know how to manage our stash? Well, I think you're stupid, Last Epoch, for not even making these purchasable with real money. You just buy them with in-game gold? Come on, you gotta have at least some pay for convenience or pay for power, but you said you won't. How stupid can you be? Okay, okay, before I keep going down this path, let's get back to stash tabs. In Diablo 4, we have five classes. All we need is five tabs, one for each class, and Blizzard believes and trusts us to make meaningful choices on what items we can keep. Sometimes I spend hours just going through all the items deciding what I need to remove, some of the most meaningful moments I've ever had in Diablo were just me staring at my items in my stash, or even inventory, deciding if I should keep a weapon with more damage to healthy enemies, or another weapon with more damage to slowed enemies. You know what? This brings me to my next point, on why us Diablo 4 superfans will absolutely hate Last Epoch. And that's because they have a loot filter. What? Why would you want to pick up less loot? And why would I want to only see items I need? Do they think we're not smart enough to make loot decisions on our own? No, that can't be it. Us Diablo 4 purists are the smartest out of any ARPG player out there. We don't need to be able to filter out white and blue items. We don't need to be able to color grade gear that drops based on having stats like plus minion damage. They don't even know how much fun we have spending countless minutes sorting through a whole inventory of items carefully looking at all the stats to see what may be an upgrade after every dungeon run. Oh my god, I'm getting antsy. 
All this talk about a full inventory of yellow items is really making me want to stop making this video right now and get back to my perfect Diablo 4. But before I do, I have two more reasons why you're going to hate Last Epoch. One of which is the crafting system. In our exquisite game, Diablo 4, we can choose one stat to re-roll where it gives you a random new stat. Last Epoch has so many crafting options, I'm only going to tell you a few of my favorites. I mean, I mean least favorites. Least favorites. The first is being able to put the exact stat you want onto a piece of gear. You want fire damage? You can add fire damage. You can transform an item into a unique or set item. Yes, there are sets in the game. How ridiculous. This last part about crafting, I'm sure you will all hate. And that's the ability to craft a powerful weapon on your high level character and give it to your low level character to make them completely overpowered and able to breeze through the early game, destroying everything in sight. How silly. Don't they know killing hordes of enemies super fast is not fun at all? Give me my 4 damage Diablo 4 Druid any day, because we are real gamers. Now for my final, and possibly most despised reason us Diablo 4 devotees will hate Last Epoch and its endgame. They have three endgame activities. The first being dungeons where you'll be able to target farm rewards and have varying levels of difficulty. Then they have the Monolith of Fate, which has so much depth to it, but I'm gonna keep things short because I really gotta get to my inventory full of yellows. It consists of a huge branching mapping system with endgame rewards, modifiers, and bosses, with the challenge and rewards increasing with its difficulty the further you go. There's a whole lot more to Monoliths, but who wants to go over the endgame systems to that extent? I do, and I'll probably make another video about this soon. Then finally, we have the arena. There are two modes. One is the arena of champions, with a set number of waves followed by a boss. Each wave, you can increase the difficulty with a modifier, which increases your reward at the end. Then there is the endless arena. And here's where I feel the developers of Last Epoch are either aliens or working for the Illuminati, because this endless arena has a ladder system a fully functional, active ladder system. Guys, Last Epoch is a small company, so considering it is taking Blizzard months to launch a ladder system, and this game will have it on launch, I am sure there is either some supernatural or future technology at play here, and we should just not trust it. Okay, so for those of you still here, and are sure you will hate Last Epoch, stop watching now. You have a full inventory of yellows to sift through. Go get to it. Okay, so those of you who are still here, I assume you actually are playing or will play Last Epoch on February 21st? If so, then subscribe to my channel, because I am too, and I do plan on making more videos on this game. Have a good one. Bye!